Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. I did my MD in pediatrics from AIMS New Delhi and currently doing my MD in pediatric oncology uh, from AIMS New Delhi. So in this video, I will tell you just a bit about uh, how, uh, how what college to choose if you are fixed on a branch. Like uh, so, a lot of people have asked me this question whether to choose BHU or KGMC if they want to go to uh, Uttar Pradesh UP, or is GMC Chandigarh a good option? And in Delhi, what colleges to prefer or something on those lines? Uh, I just these are my views. You can differ, obviously. Uh, these views just because these are my views, they do not make them right. But uh, I'll give a, uh, an explanation why I consider that it's better to go for a hospital or a place which is comes under central government. By central government, I do not mean central institutes. I do not mean AIMS, Jipmer, and PGI. They all are central institutes. Along with that, they are central government institute and having a common examination that is the INICT that will be conducted the next month. Apart from these, there are certain hospitals also. While they do not come under central institute scheme, they are not uh, autonomous bodies. For example, Savdajang Hospital. For example your RML Hospital. For example, BHU. They are, they are not they are uh, their counseling will be done by your uh, need pg counseling but they do not come under state governments they come under the central government and there are certain distinct benefits of taking a central government institute as compared to a state government hospital the first and the foremost one that i have elaborated in my previous video as well is the salary uh now no matter what people keep on saying i'll be very blunt uh uh, that the the prayers and the blessings that you will get being a doctor won't feed you. It's good to have a good salary. So keep the, that in mind. So the first one is I have already told that as a JR the salary in a central government institute is close to 90,000 before tax uh, 92,000. And this is my current salary as an SR. Uh, that is uh, before tax is close to 1.15 lakh and after tax is about 1 lakh uh, 3000. So uh, the good part about the salary in a central government, is, good thing about the salary as far as the central government institutes is concerned, they're high, they're very high. They tend to be like I've told you, they tend to be in the range of 92,000 for a JR before tax and after tax around 85,000 for uh, SR is around 1.15 lakh and after tax about 1.3 lakhs. So this is a very important advantage that you need to know. And this is same for any central government institute. For example, I'm studying in AIMS, the salary will be same for a person like me who's studying in AIMS and for someone who's in Savdarjang hospital or someone who's in RML hospital. But this won't hold true for someone who's doing it from a state government colleges, barring Delhi, for example, example in Delhi the state government is rich that's why they're able to in fact afford the free electricity and everything uh, the state government hospitals pay decently well but uh, for example UP it's better to go for BHU because central government institutes won't have a bond they won't have a bond the salaries will be better rather than let's say going for KGMC it's better to go for a central government institute like GMC Chandigarh than let's say going for a state government college in say Amritsar uh, apart from the fact that Chandigarh is obviously a better city to uh, better city as compared to Chandigarh, uh, Amritsar. People might uh, differ on that view, but there's certain other perks of working in your uh, central government institute. First is LTC. So if you're say, let's say you're coming from down south in Maharashtra or in uh, Karnataka or uh, you know uh, Tamil Nadu and you're going to a uh, central government institute uh, uh, a central uh, government institute then you have the benefit of something called as LTC that is leave travel compensation now because of LTC once in the three year tenure you can go back to your hometown and when you're going back to your hometown that air travel by the way not train air travel economy fare will be sponsored by the government so around 20 30 thousand this is one you get a thesis allowance. At the end of your tenure, you'll be getting around five to 6,000 rupees as your thesis allowance, this can increase. You get something called as book allowance. Although book allowance is marginal, it's like just 2,000 over the period of three years, so that is 6,000. But still, for for example, for as a uh, uh, someone who was doing his MD in pediatrics, the biggest expenditure was buying that big Nelson and that Nelson itself was around 5,000. So that will be cover given by my institute itself. The biggest advantage that I will tell as far as the monetary aspect is concerned is a leave in cashment. So every central government institute provides 30, 36 and 36 days of leave, total of 102 daily leaves over a period of three years. These are your paid entitled leaves They're in, and they can be in cashed. So example, if you took only 40 leaves out of these 102 leaves, these 62 leaves, since they were paid leaves, you can in cash them as far as, you know, from your salary as far as. So 62 days means two months salary. So 
basic NPDA, we won't go into the calculation of this. For someone who has 60 uh, days of salary, they can get close to 1.5 lakh rupees at the end of their tenure. So this is a very distinct good advantage that I believe of any central government institute. You get leave and cashment apart from the little allowances and the ability to go back to your hometown at least once in a three years on the basis of from the government. So these are the perks that you'll get because of being in a central government institute. So that's why Sabdajing or RML and LHMC, these are central, they are in a central government. They, I believe they should be preferred over, let's say, UC or MAMSI. Uh, having said that, MAMSI has a charm of its own. It's one of the best colleges in the country. Similarly, BHU should be preferred over KGMC. And if you're getting seat in any peripheral aims, be it AIMS Jodhpur or other, you know, AIMS Rishikesh, they should always be preferred over cent, uh, state government colleges. Uh, in some example, in my opinion, AIMS Jodhpur should definitely prefer over SMS Jaipur if you're getting AIMS Jodhpur. Again, other colleges which are there in the Union Territories, GMC Chandigarh, colleges that might be there in Andaman and Nicobar, colleges that might be there in Pondicherry, they all, because Union Territory colleges will come under the purview of the central government. And that's why the central government institute, they will have all these privileges. Apart from these privileges, one biggest thing that I believe is important, they have something as no bond. Bond is imposed by the state governments. It's not imposed by the central government. So there is no bond for all any of these institutes. So whenever you're deciding upon your institute, keep in mind, is there any central government institute around that area? And it's better or preferable if you do your residency from a central government institute as compared to. Again, this is not for institute of national importance like AIMS, PGI and JIPMAR. Any central government institute would be Savdarjung, be it RML, be it GMC Chandigarh, be it, you know, uh, colleges in Pondicherry, be it colleges in, uh, you know, uh, BHU for that matter of fact, all these colleges should be preferred because of the no bond system, because of these perks the central government affords as compared to a state government. Thank you.